On this episode of OBD for Everyone, we are proud to present the ultimate OBD scanner buyer's guide and speed test. Yes, this is going to be good. If you've ever thought about buying an OBD scanner, there are so many to pick from, it can be difficult to decide on which one. Should you get one with Wi-Fi or with Bluetooth? Will it work with your phone or tablet? Do the cheap scanners work as well as the expensive ones? Well, this episode will give you a good idea about what to look for in an OBD scanner. We will answer all these questions and give you some solid guidelines and recommendations based on our hands-on usage. After all, that's what this channel is about, OBD for everyone. So let's get started. When selecting an OBD scanner, the first decision you need to make is Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Let's have a look at the benefits and drawbacks of each. Benefits of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi works with just about everything. iPhones, iPads, Android phones, tablets, PCs, and Macs. And Wi-Fi is generally a little faster than Bluetooth. Now, the drawbacks of Wi-Fi include it uses more power than Bluetooth, so your phone's battery will get run down a little faster. And when connected to a Wi-Fi scanner, your phone can't get to the internet. Now, the benefits of Bluetooth are it uses very little power, so it doesn't drain the battery as fast as Wi-Fi. And you can access the internet when connected to a Bluetooth scanner, unlike Wi-Fi. Now, the drawbacks of Bluetooth include the data rate is generally a little slower than Wi-Fi, and the older traditional Bluetooth does not work on iPhones or iPads, only Android devices. However, Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE scanners will work with iPhones and iPads and Android phones and tablets. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Now, I want to talk about OBD scanner speed, or how fast a scanner can read the data from the engine computer. The faster it can read the data, the quicker the app can update the display, draw the graph, or write the data to a file. When you plug in your OBD scanner and connect to it using an app, you are actually adding a device or node on the car's network. Now, different car manufacturers use different types of networks, and different networks run at different speeds. For example, most cars made for US and Canada before 2008 have a network speed of around 10,000 bits per second, which gives us about 5 to 10 scanner updates per second, also known as PIDs per second. However, in 2008, it became mandatory for all cars sold in US and Canada to use CAN, or Controller Area Network 4, onboard diagnostics. This is good news for us, since CAN is much faster, with most cars running at 500,000 bits per second. The bottom line is, if your car is 2007 or older, your car's network speed won't be very fast and the OBD scanner will have a slower update rate. However, if your car is 2008 or newer, you should be able to get more than 20 updates per second with the right OBD scanner. So, you may be wondering, how do we measure the OBD scanner speeds? Well, we used a 3-year-old 10.1-inch Samsung Galaxy Tab A, a 6-year-old Apple iPad Air, the app OBD Fusion on both devices, and a 2011 Infiniti G37. Now, we used two different methods to determine the scanner speed. First, we used a refresh rate or pits per second as shown in OBD Fusion under Settings and then Information. We waited 60 seconds to ensure the app had time to average up the speed and then it was recorded. Second, we selected 25 PIDs or engine sensors and recorded them to a CSV text file for at least 300 seconds or 5 minutes while driving around in a large loop. And this was done on both the iPad Air and the Galaxy tablet. This should average out any speed fluctuations and give us an accurate average speed. After looking at the data, there are minimal differences between the iPad Air and the Galaxy tablet. So we average them together to simplify the summary. Now, for this buyer's guide, we have purchased and tested 11 wireless OBD scanners, with one exception. The VPeak OBD Check BLE Plus, which was provided by VPeak. Thank you, VPeak. Alright, let's get to the results. For the Wi-Fi scanners, this was the fastest one. This is a generic Elm 327, and it averaged 51 pits per second, which is quite fast. Now, I like the scanner so much, I purchased another one just like it. However, this one was much slower at 19 pits per second, and when it was connected, it added a lot of noise to the car's network. This has the potential to slow down or even stop network communications. If the ABS module can't communicate with the engine computer, that's not good and bad things can happen. Now, since they both look so similar and you don't know which one you're getting, I don't recommend them. It's not worth the risk. 
Now, the next fastest was the OBD Link MX Wi Fi at 30 pids per second. When I was analyzing the data logs, I noticed it would drop the Wi-Fi connection three to six times, resulting in a data loss and an overall slower speed. I checked to make sure it had the latest firmware, and it did. I went to Obadi Link's support form and posted my issue, hoping for an easy fix. There, I was reminded that Obadi Link's products have a three-year warranty. As it turns out, my scanner was two and a half years old, so I sent in a copy of my receipt and explained the issue, and they sent me an OBD Link MX Plus as a replacement. Now, that's a nice long warranty and excellent customer service. Anyways, the OBD Link MX Wi Fi scanner is being phased out, so I'm going to remove it from the results. Now, this leads us with the Foseal and the VPeak. The Foseal Wi Fi has a speed of about 20 pits per second and costs a little more at $20 US or 56 Canadian from Amazon. And it has a one year warranty. The VPeak VP01 is a little slower at 12 pits per second and costs a little less at 17 US or $26 Canadian from Amazon. And it has a one year warranty. Overall, if you must have Wi Fi, these are both good choices with a good warranty. And next up is Bluetooth. In the top spot is the OBD Link MX Plus. It's very quick with an average speed of 42 pits per second, clearly beating the other Bluetooth scanners. And it's the only OBD scanner with a three year warranty, support for Ford and Mazda's HS and MS CAN networks, has built in security to prevent unauthorized access to your car's network, comes with a free full featured app. OBD Link, it has an automatic sleep wake up feature so you can leave it plugged in all the time, and has free, unlimited, vehicle specific enhanced diagnostic upgrades. This allows you to check for trouble codes in all the car's modules like the ABS module, airbag module, transmission control module, just to name a few. And since it uses Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE, it works with iPhones, iPads, and Android phones and tablets. Now, the price is around $80 to $90, which is a lot but it also gives you a lot. In second place is this scanner, OBD2. This one was a little bit of a surprise. It averaged 28 pits per second and only cost $5 from Amazon.com. But for some reason, it's $42 in Canada from Amazon.ca. Anyways, at $5, that's a good deal. At $42, not so much. Now, this Bluetooth scanner will only work with Android devices since it uses the older Bluetooth version, which is not supported by Apple devices. Next up is the VPeak VP11. It has a good speed of 22 pits per second, costs around $10 to $20, and offers a 12 month replacement warranty. And just like the previous one, this Bluetooth scanner only works with Android devices. Now, the next two. OBD Check BLE and OBD Check BLE Plus. These two scanners have an average speed of 18 to 19 pits per second. The BLE version costs $30 to $40, and the BLE Plus version is new and it supports the latest Elm 327 2.2 commands, and it costs around $40 to $50. They both have a 12 month replacement warranty, and since they are Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE, they will work with iPhones, iPads, as well as Android phones and tablets. And at the bottom of the list is this Elm 327 Mini. This was a $10 purchase from Amazon a few years ago. I've never been able to use it. When I try to pair it on my Galaxy tablet, it shows the pairing code is incorrect. I tried every known pairing code that Google could find. Nothing worked. I contacted the seller and they told me to try the typical pairing codes like 40s, 41s, 1234, etc. But none of this worked. So, buyer beware, the lesson I learned here is better to stick with the better known brands. I want to return to the question of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. In the past, I have always recommended Wi-Fi scanners, mostly because of the higher speed and that it works with all devices. But now I recommend Bluetooth LE or BLE scanners. They work on Apple and Android devices. They don't use much power, which saves your phone's battery. They're almost as fast as Wi-Fi scanners, and you can use the internet when connected to a Bluetooth or BLE scanner. For Apple and Android devices, which OBD scanners do we recommend? Well, it depends upon how much you want to spend. For $80 to $90, the OBD Link MX Plus is one great scan tool. At 42 pits per second, it's fast. It comes with a free, full-featured app, OBD Link, has an automatic sleep wake-up feature so you can leave it plugged in all the time without draining the car's battery. It has a three-year warranty and comes with free, unlimited, enhanced diagnostics. 
Now, next up is the $30 to $50 range, which are the VPeak OBD Check BLE and OBD Check BLE Plus. They have a 12 month warranty and they're fairly quick at 18 to 19 pids per second. Now, if you have an Android device, there are two decent and inexpensive choices. The OBD2 scanner is a good deal if you're in the US. For $5, it's quick at 28 pids per second, but doesn't have a warranty. The second option is the VPeak VP11. For about $10 to $20, it has a good speed of 22 pits per second and a 12 month replacement warranty. Now, if you want Wi-Fi, the $20 to $25 Faux Seal has a good speed of 20 pits per second and an 18 month warranty. The other option is the $15 to $20 VPeak VP01. At 12 pits per second, it offers fair speed with a 12 month warranty. All right, let's wrap up this episode. After data logging over 400,000 PIDs on 11 different nobody scanners using two different tablets and driving around in four hours in a small circle, we have done our best to create a fact-based buyer's guide and speed test. Now, will you be able to get the same results we did? Well, it's hard to say. Your results could be faster or slower or about the same. You see, different cars have different types of networks running at different speeds with different amounts of network traffic. However, this guide should give you a well-informed place to start. Oh, one last thing. Some of you may think it isn't fair to compare an $80 scanner to these cheaper scanners, and you're right. However, we simply tested the wireless scanners we had. In a future episode, we'll be comparing a few $100 scanners to see how they compare on speeds and features. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.